All right, so we are on uh, part 13. The last part saw Beowulf and Grendel fighting. Um, this next one is called Grendel is Vanquished, so spoiler alert. <clears throat> For no cause whatever would the Earlman's defender leave in life joys the loathsome newcomer. He deemed his existence utterly useless to men under heaven. Many a noble of Beowulf's brandished his battle sword old, would guard the life of his lord and protector, the far famous chieftain, if able to do so. While waging the warfare, this wist they but little, brave battle thanes, while his body intending to slit into silvers, slivers and seeking his spirit, that the relentless foemen, nor finest of weapons, of all on the earth, nor any of war bills was willing to injure, but weapons of victory, swords and such like he had sworn to dispense with. His death at the time must prove to be wretched, and the far away spirit widely should journey into enemy's power. This plainly he saw then, who with mirth of mood, malice no little, had wrought in the past on the race of the earthmen. To God he was hostile, that his body would fail him, but Heglac's hardy henchmen and kinsmen held him by the hand. Hateful to other was each one if living. A body wound suffered. The direful demon, damage incurable, was seen on his shoulder. His snoos were shivered. His body did burst. To Beowulf was given glory in battle. Grendel from thenceward must flee and hide in the fen cliffs and marshes, sick unto death. His dwelling must look for unwinsome and woeful. He wist the more fully the end of his earthly existence was nearing, his life day's limits. At last for the Danemen, when the slaughter was over, their wish was accomplished. The, corm, the comer from far land had cleansed then of evil, wise and valiant. The war hall of Hrothgar saved it from violence. He joyed in the night work and repute for prowess, the prince of the Geatmen, for the East Danish people his boast had accomplished bettered their burdensome bale sorrows fully. The craft begot evil they erstwhile had suffered and were forced to endure from crushing oppression, their manifold misery. Twas a manifest token when the hero in battle, the hand suspended, the arm and the shoulder, there was all of the claw of Grendel together, neath great stretching hall roof. So essentially, Bendewolf suspend Grendel's hands and arms. It's kind of confusing there. All right, now we are on part 14, Rejoicing of the Danes. In the mist of the morning, many a warrior stood round the gift hall, as the story is told me. Folk princes fared then from far and from near, through long stretching journeys to look at the wonder, the footprints of the foemen. Few of the warriors who gazed on the foot tracks of the inglorious creature, his parting from life pained very deeply. How weary in spirit, off from those regions, in combats conquered, he carried his traces, faded and flying to the flood of the knickers. There, in bloody billows, bubbled the currents. The angry eddy was everywhere mingled and seething with gore, welling with sword blood. His death doomed had hid him. When reaved of his joyance, he laid down his life in the lair he had fled to. His heathenish spirit, where hell did receive him, thence, the friends from old backward turned them, and many a yonker from merry adventure, striding their stallions, stout from the seaward, heroes on horses. They were heard very often Beowulf's praises. Many often asserted that neither south nor north in the circuit of waters or stretching earth plain, none other was better. My bearers, mid bearers of war shields, more worthy to govern. Neath the arch of the either, not any, however, Against the friend lord muttered, mocking words uttered, Hrothgar the gracious, a good king he, oft the famed ones permitted their fallow skinned horses to run in rivalry, racing and chasing, where the fieldways appeared to them fair and inviting, known for their excellent, oft a thane of the folk lord. A man of celebrity, mindful of rhythms, who ancient traditions treasured in memory. New word groups found properly bound, the bared after Gan, then Beowulf's venture, wisely to tell of, and the words that were clever to utterly skillfully, earnestly speaking, everything he told, 
that he heard as Sigmund's mighty achievements, many things hidden, the strife of the Walesling, the wide going ventures, the children of men of knew of but little, the feud and the fury, but Fitella with, with him, when such like matters he minded to speak of. Uncle to nephew, as in every contention, each to other ever, was ever devoted. A numerous host of the race of the skaters, they had slain with the sword edge. To Sigmund accrued then no little of glory when his life days were over, since he sturdy in struggle had destroyed the great dragon. The horde keepers, tre the horde treasures keeper, neath the horror grayish stone he, the son of the eighthling, unaided adventured, the perilous project, not present, was Vitella. Yet the fortune befell him of forcing his weapon through the marvelous dragon, that it stood in the wall, well honored weapon. The worm was slaughtered. The great one had gained then by his glorious achievement to reap from the ring hoard richest enjoyment. At best it did please him, the vessel he loaded. Shining ornaments on the ship's bosom carried, kinsmen of Wales, the drake and heat melted. He was farthest famed of fugitive pilgrims, mid wide scattered world folk for works of great prowess. War troopers shelter, hence waxed he in honor. Afterwards, Hemorrhoid's hero's strength failed him, his vigor and valor, mid venomous haters to the hands of foemen, he was foully delivered. Off driven early, agony billows oppressed him too long to his people he became then to all the eighthlings an ever great burden and the daring one's journey in days of yore many wise men were wont to deplore such as hoped he would bring them to help in their sorrow that the that the son of their ruler should rise into power holding the headship held by his fathers should govern the people the gold hoard and burrow the kingdom of heroes, the realm of the Scaldings. He, to all men, became then far more beloved. Hegelas kinsman, to kindreds and races, to his friends and much dearer, him malice assaulted. Oft running and racing on roadsters they measured. The dun-colored highways, then the light of the morning was hurried and hastened. Went henchmen in numbers to the beautiful building, bold ones in spirit, to look at the wonder, the liege lord himself, then from his wife bower wending, warden of treasures, glorious trod with troopers unnumbered, famed for his virtues, and with him the queen wife measured the mean ways with maidens attending. Okay, part 15, Hrothgar's Gratitude. Hrothgar discoursed, to the hall building went he, he stood by the pillar, saw the deep, saw the steep rising hall roof gleamed with gold gems, and Grendel, his hand there. For the sight we behold now, thanks to the wielder, early be offered, much evil I bided, snaring from Grendel, God can e'er accomplish, wonder on wonder, wielder of glory. But lately I reckon, ne'er under heaven, comfort to gain me for any of my sorrows while the handsomest of houses horrid with bloodstain. Glory uptowered, grief had off frightened. Each of the wise ones who weened not that ever the folk troops defenses gainst foes they should strengthen, gainst sprites and monsters, through the might of the wielder. A doughty retainer hath a deed now accomplished, while erstwhile we all with our excellent wisdom failed to perform. Many affirm very truly, Whatever woman sore in all of the nations gave birth to the child, if she yet surviveth, then the long ruling lord was lavished to hereward. In the birth of the baron, now, Beowulf dear, most excellent hero, I'll love thee in spirit as baron of my body, bear well henceforward the relationship new, no lack shall befall thee. So he's saying there afterward, Beowulf is now going to be his son. Of earth joys, any I have ever can give thee. Full often for lesser service I've given. Hero less hardy, horrid treasure precious, to a weaker in war strife. By works of distinction thou hast gained for thyself, now that thy glory shall flourish forever and ever. The all ruler quite thee with good from his hand, as he her hitherto did thee. Beowulf answered. 
Eclos offering, offspring. That labor of glory most gladly achieved we, the combat accomplished, unquailing we ventured, the enemies grapple. I would grant it much rather thou wert able to look at the creature in person, faint unto falling, the foe in his trappings. On murder bed quickly I minded to bind him, with firm holding fetters that forced by my grapple, lo should he lie in life and death struggle, lest his body escape, I was wholly unable, since God did not will it to keep him from going. Not held him that firmly, hated oppressor, too swift was the foeman, yet safely regarding. He suffered his hand behind him to linger, his arm and shoulder to act as watcher. No shadow of solace the woe-begone creature. From there, found him there, Nicholas, the hated destroyer, liveth no longer, lashed for his evils. But sorrow hath seized him, in snare meshes hath him, close in its clutches, keepeth him writhing in baleful bonds. There, bandished for evil, the men, the man shall wait for the mighty tribunal. How the glory of God, how the God of glory shall give him his earnings. Then the soldier kept silent, son of old Eclaf, from boasting and bragging of battle achievements, since the princes beheld there the hand that depended. Neath the lofty hall timbers by the might of the nobleman, each one before him, the enemy's fingers, each fingernail strong steel most resembled, the heathen's one hand spur, the hero in battle's claw most uncanny, quoth they agreeing that not any excellent edges of brave ones was willing to touch him, the terrible creature's battle hand bloody to bear from him. 